more breath. Blow the cushion of faith. Down four. No, no break. He broke it. He broke it. Oh, he went for it again. Oh, no. I can't believe it. JDC on takes it. What a set. With a hop kick. That was sick. That was so nice. The four. Oh, nice. Hop kick out of nowhere. This might do a ton of things. This might kill. One plus two. Not enough. Just enough. Uh, one more pixel. Oh. Race drive. One last chance for a cold coin. Aye. And that's going to be it. Welcome to Inside Esports, everybody. It's FGC Day, and that means that Drew and I are about to pop off about some tech. And, bro, where was the hype this weekend? Bro, the hype was in NorCal, baby. I loved it. Three on three format, NorCal. You choose your members, two lives each. Shouts to Bronson Tran. What a great show. Hey, we're going to be talking about it, but before we break it all down, let's check out some of the best moments from Strong Style in these highlights. Back this is going to be ugly. Dirty. Oh, you can't move. Where you go? Where you, you can't get move. Up. Get up. Oh. Get up. You can't move. JCR trying to steal it. Four, I three, two, one! Oh, he got the lead! I told you he was gonna steal it! Wow, get his license plate number! Oh, oh. he got him looking, but he missed! Hatchet, he missed. do it again! He no right break, right. that's gonna be it! The final match on this team tournament! No, no break, he broke it, he broke it! Out oh, he went for it again! He might have oh, oh, no! I can't, I can't JDC, believe he did a hop kick! JDC, oh! With a hop kick. Oh, got him with the, with the wall. No. Oh, yo. Yeah. Triple stop. Jump back, jab. Stop. Yeah. Did, did, did it he block? He yes. Did. Oh, what God. a call out. JDCR is gone. Connor is killing it. <laughs> Beautiful. And now this is this is a big threat here. Oh, oh get the airborne jab. Drive. What are you going to do? Got to guess. That was two plus four. He's dead. Wow! No dunk on the That's a backswing blow into the Johnny! Nice Ooh, side good step. step. Could have got a little more damage out of that. Got the counter here. It's gonna confirm with the wall break, and this should be it. <laughs> that was sick. That was so nice. The oh, power, nice crush. power crush. Power kick out of nowhere. Uh, this might do a ton of it. This might kill. One plus two. Not enough. Not just enough. Uh, one more pixel. Oh. Race drive, one last chance for a call of coin. Wow. And that's gonna be it. All right, now, Drew, this event wasn't a part of the Tekken World Tour, but despite that, it was like the FGC event of the weekend. What made this so popular? Dude, it, Strong Style has a legacy, right, with this, within the Tekken community. Uh -huh. Bronson Tran, AK, the former best player in the world, AK, not really, he's trash, but <laughs> he is a great tournament organizer, and this tournament used to always get people from all over the world before there was a Tekken World Tour. Yeah. And they were like, you know what, let's make it the funnest Tekken event of all time, let's keep it laid back, let's keep that whole FGC feel to it, but it still had high-level esports production, and that's what made it amazing. So is that, is that what it is? then it's like just you know having uh, Bronson behind it like having a good teal like that can that just make an event even if it was like uh, you know like a terrible format it would still be good just having a, a guy the atmosphere uh, it, it depends because like yes Bronson Tran is the funnest guy to be around especially if you love Tekken right yeah but there's more to it he has an excellent team behind him the format was super fun yeah. the energy was super loose because you know it's not really a technical tour event but people were still trying to beat each other trying to get that title yeah, strong yeah, yeah, style yeah. but at the same time it was like a three-on-three -three format which most of the time the Tekken World Tour has a single one-on-one -on -one format so it's, it, yeah. it's kind of fun well you know what let's let's talk about that because this this wasn't your ordinary as you just said nope. 1v1 Tekken tournament it was uh, a 3v3 team event can you just walk us through uh, how the format and how it worked so basically this three-on-three -three format you each player had two lives right okay so you had you basically had to win a two out of three side with every player but the thing is you can switch the order of your players. So is this a bracket still as well, or is it like groups? Uh, it, it, it's a still a normal bracket, okay. right? But the thing is, is that like when you play, when you have that that extra layer of lives, you yeah. can actually strategically re, re, uh, maneuver your players around to beat worse matchups. Because let's face it, when you play Tekken, when you play any fighting game, uh -huh. it's all about the matchups. Yeah. So right? okay. So every round you go into, and you you reset your lives, and then you go against that other three v three team, yeah. um, and then you can may lose your life. So it's kind of like a crew battle. It, it's it's, it's, a cru it's a crew battle with an extra twist to it. 
right? So That's nuts. Yeah, so in case you lose your life, you're like, yo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just send in Joey Fury. He has two lives left, yeah. and you can OCV the team. And that's what happened. <laughs> okay, so uh, just I feel like some players are going to, like, do a lot better than this. I think uh, one of the teams that stood out really was uh, EQNX. Uh, like, they Ooh, uh, may have not been the favorites, but uh, it seemed to work out really well for them, right? Yeah, so basically Team Equinox had Cuddlecore, Joey Fury, yeah. and I believe Timo, uh, Timo Lee. Oh, yeah. And unfortunately... Sorry, and Dimeback. Okay. And so sometimes, Joy Fury can't beat every player there, right? Yeah. So Cuddlecore would would cover his bad From matchups. In, yeah. And then if Cuddlecore couldn't do that well, then Dimeback will cover her matchups, right? Okay, yeah. And so that's what made it interesting. And that's why they got so far, because they were just strategically placing each other like where they're with, they would succeed well, the uh, most. Well, Joey Fury beat JDCR. Joey Fury <laughs> beat Team New York by OCVing them. It was incredible, dude. He just sat there. He's like, I'm gonna be this fake New York player, aka JDCR, one of the greatest Tekken players. <laughs> yeah, right. Of all That's time. what I'm saying. And from Korea. And then he was like, I'm gonna beat NYC Fab, my old school rival. And then he just went buck the whole time. It, it, was, it was interesting. So do you think it was it was the form of that kind of helped uh, carry him through that, or do you think it, just on that day, say it was just a standard tournament, one v one tournament? Him in. He was pushing through. Do you think Joey Fury still would have done good on that there? Was it oh, this format that really helped him out? Absolutely. It's not that the format helped. It's that the format made it a little more entertaining. It, it brought more strategic depth when you played against another team. Yeah. And so they, Team Equinox knew that, hey, JDCR is one of the toughest people we got to beat. Yeah. And they're setting him in early. So what yeah. we got to do, we're going to send a Joey Fury right now. Yeah. And on his one single life, he beat them all. Well, he and then, and then it's and it's kind of easy ment mentally for the rest of the team after that. Because like, right, we got him out of the way now. Yeah, yeah there's, a little, there's a little breathing room when they do that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. But I think on that day, if it was like a normal Tekken World Tour format, 1v1, he still would have won. Yo, that's probably gonna kick him. Because you still have to beat JDCR yeah, that, that, That's the thing. That's gonna kick him into top gear now yeah. for the future. Like I'm kind of, I'm kind of scared for everyone else. Uh, for Joey Fury, like he's and, gonna go ham now. And the thing is, Joey Fury hasn't been coming out to a lot of tournaments lately yeah. because he's, he's basically busy with life, right? Yeah. He wants to focus on his education. But Tekken is life. But Tekken is life, baby. <laughs> well, you got, you got whip punish those electric wind godfists. And <laughs> honestly, he plays Craig Mardu. Yeah. And it, it, it's tough to like, it's it's tough to plan against that because he's one of the few players that plays that character. Uh -huh. And on top of that, he, he doesn't come out anymore. So yeah. every time he levels up, where's the footage? Yeah, it's true. only when he yeah, comes yeah. into like one of these rare but events. That's a strat. Is like if nobody can play against me, nobody's gonna know the matchup, so I can just crush him every time I come out. Oh, absolutely. Is that, you think it's a good strat, or do you, should he be getting out more events? I, you know what? It's a mix of both. Joey Fury is a world-class talent. And he should be coming out more. That yeah. way he can get more experience from, from other players, just in case people catch up to him. That's but at true, the same yeah. time, he's so good, he could probably play that game. He's all right. It's, it's, it's an interesting strat. Now, just in general, I mean, you, you're, you're so hype about this. Honestly, to me, it sounds really cool. You said it adds a lot more depth with this kind of format. Should the FTC be doing more of that stuff? Like maybe more team a bit, Yeah, like kind yeah. of abandon the 1v1 and go more into that in-depth team thing? Or I, I actually think a team tournament is a much better uh, television product. It's a much better product to watch as it's a It's easier viewer. to get behind teams. Yeah, because it, you yeah. can build a narrative, right? Yeah. I mean, they had narratives like, yo, you had Team Equinox. You had Team Japan. Mm -hmm. You have Team New York who had a fake Korean player, right? You had Team Canada in there. Like, it, it, uh -huh. it's interesting when it's much easier to, to bind to an idea, a team, than it is to a single player. Right, yeah, much yeah, easier yeah, yeah. To, to relate to them. But there, there's more so. story too, because you ever talk about like roster moves. Oh, this guy's yeah, actually going to go play with these guys yeah, now. Yeah. There's a lot more uh, fan. Yeah, you can build, you can you can build a narrative yeah. much easier, and I think that's why I think team tournaments are. You're starting to see them pop up a little more. Yeah. Like Street Fighter League has a three-on-three -three tournament now. They're going to enter their season mm -hmm. two, but I, I wish Tekken World Tour had maybe maybe a three-on-three -three tournament that is officially part of the tour. Yeah. All right, so do you, do you think, right now, give me the hot take, should the FGC abandon 1v1s and do all team stuff? Oh, no, okay. no, <laughs> absolutely not. One, one, one on one is our bread and butter, baby. That's a legacy. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't, you do you not mess with tradition. It. There's some traditions you can't break, and that's one of them. <laughs> Maybe just add more in. Oh, absolutely. All right. Adding, adding a three on three would be really interesting to the whole thing. I'm, so I'm down. Do but, anyways, Drew, I appreciate you blessing us with your FGC knowledge now, but we'll catch up with you later for some Mario Maker 2. How about that? Oh, for sure. All right. <laughs>